Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from the Automation Blog and School, and this week on the Automation Podcast, I meet up with Rob Wiedemann from Banner Engineering to learn all about their pro lighting products. Rob, thank you for coming on the Automation Podcast. I'm really looking forward to learning all about your pro lighting and indication products. But before we jump right into your presentation, could you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and what your role is at Banner? Hey, Sean. Thanks for having me. Uh, looking forward to our conversation today. I'm Rob Wiedemann, the Vice President of Product Management for Banner's Lighting and Connectivity Business Units. I've been with Banner over 18 years, uh, about the last seven of them uh, working in some manner or another on behalf of growing Banner's lighting and indicator products. Nice. And if anybody's listening to the audio version of the podcast, we're going to try to be uh, very descriptive on what these products do. I think everybody knows what a 22 millimeter uh, pilot light looks like. So we have that as a common reference point. And for those who are watching, you're going to be treated to some really nice pictures here, like this cover picture, which has a panel with all kinds of different lights on it. So with that, I'll just turn it back over to you, Rob. All right, cool. Yeah, absolutely. The The challenge of the day is to talk about lights in an interesting and meaningful way. Uh, certainly great on a screen, okay on paper, much better in your hand, but we'll work through it. Uh, and, and the goal for today is talk a little bit about banner and, and pro lighting, and then we're just going to jump into applications so uh, everyone can see where this stuff actually gets used in the world. And so let's just do a, a quick uh, review of banner engineering uh, around in the industrial automation space for now more than 55 years. Lighting and indication came to be a part of banner's offering uh, not quite 15 years ago. Uh, it's been a very solid growth driver for us. And, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, a little bit selfishly here, but being part of the lighting team is an amazing part of what I do here at banner. Uh, love the creativity of our engineering staff, love the, I guess, call it growth options uh, we see out in the industry here uh, because there are absolutely so many different things you can do with lighting and indicator products, uh, really uh, completely open to just creativity and in what we can come up with, what our customers can come up with. And just to clarify, you know, lighting and indication can be uh, the lights on your ceiling above you, uh, can be, of course, lights, uh, tower lights, indicators, touch buttons. Uh, we have some inline indicators, pick to light, put to light devices. Uh, we build in uh, some converters and connectivity to the offering as well to help the lighting and indicator products work more efficiently or install more efficiently with some of Banner's other offerings, of course, like sensors and, and safety devices there. Um, and so today we wanna to talk a little bit about the visual factory and Sean, to start, you know, with all of your experience in factory automation, what comes to mind for you when you think of kind of classic lighting and, and indicator products out in the factory? Well, I mean, like I said in the intro that 22 millimeter pilot light, right? That's like just such a huge part. Even if you have an HMI in the panel, a lot of times you'll have some additional indicators and maybe buttons as well. Um, and then the stack light has really become a huge part of, um, of you know, a lot of systems. You even see them, you know, in some commercial applications as well. But, you know, some of the, you know, beyond that, right, a lot of what I'm seeing in these slides are kind of like new applications, uh, different ways of looking at things that are that are out of the box. So I'm I'm excited. But would you have expected those two answers? Yeah, we're absolutely going to cover pilot lights, uh, pilot like indicators, and touch buttons. Uh, we've got a couple of solid examples there. We'll take a look at in the application section. Stack light, absolutely. Uh, and you're right. You know, I see <laughs> at grocery stores, <laughs> retail places. <laughs> Um, still serve a, a very classic purpose. Green is good, red is bad. Uh, it, it has uh, you know kind of transcended time in terms of factory automation. Uh, the other examples I had are the we call it the vapor tight fluorescent light fixture. It's a big clunky plastic box uh, with the old fluorescent tubes inside, um, often flickering or one bulb burned out. You see them above uh, machines or operator workstations out in the factory. And 
we see a ton of upgrade options here in the pro lighting offering. So from that stack light, now we can take green, yellow, red and go to, sure, still green, yellow, red, but also other color options, other interface options. We can take that vapor tight or that old fluorescent fixture and still have great white light. Uh, LEDs give us a nice clean. We can pick the color temperature. Uh, just a, a good solid look for operators to work under for their shift. But we can take that same light and build in colored LEDs as well. And so now we're combining the illumination with the indication to get more of an all-in-one product. Uh, still uh, very effective for both illumination and indication, uh, whether it be for the operator or the supervisor in the area. And then another example we want to talk about here. So we covered indication, we covered illumination. The lights also play a big part in communication within a factory environment. So rather than the old school uh, task boards or, or quality boards, uh, we can now build in displays and colors and operator feedback through touch, uh, capacitive touch, mechanical touch, other touch technologies into these devices. So we've got an all-in-one uh, display plus status plus feedback type solution that doesn't need a big board or uh, a box or an enclosure or anything of that sort. Yeah, I think it's cool, especially that one in the that it's like, it looks like a 20, 22 millimeter button or, or light, but it has a ring that's changing colors, filling up, and then it has a number in the middle. So you can do so much with that one little spot, which is which is really cool. Yeah, that one uh, is actually a 50 millimeter diameter. <laughs> yeah, oh, is it? Squeezed, yeah, that's Seems better. Squeeze that one down yet, but. Uh... But yeah, it gives you controllable LEDs uh, on the circumference. Uh, it happens to be one of our circular models. It does give a four-digit, seven-segment display in the middle for both text and numeric communication out to an operator and does have dual touch surfaces as well so that the operator could respond uh, or even scroll through options and select. Uh, so tons of flexibility there. Cool. And so when we put all of these products together, plus uh, plus many more that Banner has in its lighting and indicator offering, we talk about stepping into the visual factory. And so we take those themes of indicate, illuminate, and communicate, and turn those into problem solvers for our customers. So uh, back to your pilot lights, not only could we put pilot lights on enclosure, but we could also put a white light inside, even adding some motion detector options there. Uh, light up inside uh, the panel or enclosure. You can put lights onto machines. Uh, we fill out the material handling side of the equation, pick and put walls, uh, light guided assembly, like guided part picking for operators uh, in all sorts of manufacturing environments, kind of classically in the automotive space, but certainly has expanded from there. And then we get into uh, the indicator options, where again, the, the stack light or the, the tower light uh, in banner terms uh, certainly lives on uh, but has morphed into uh, different diameters of tower lights different mounting options has even uh, bled into our strip light offering that started with white lights for illumination but can now certainly be an indicator product as well and so as we talk about this visual factory sean do you have uh, any idea about the visual factory? Have you heard of the visual factory as a term out there? Yeah, I, I have. I've started to hear about it more and more. And I think, um, you know, I think this, this uh, evolution slide talking about just being a tower light and now, um, you know, it's instead of just, you know, red, green, and blue, like a stoplight, there's all these other things you can do, you know, and, and it's, you know, we, we see these, uh, these lights filling up and changing colors and part of the, the the led strip changing colors and i just think it's such a great visual the audio audience will have to will have to tune in to see it but um there's just so much you can do so i'd love to hear your thoughts and and how you guys are approaching it yeah so again for the viewers they're seeing what we call the evolution of the visual factory for the listeners we start uh, the visual factory and we call it simple status again back to a static light green is good red is bad everyone's very familiar with that in the banner world we always use colored leds with translucent or clear uh, product surfaces so we have very distinct 
on-off differentiation. There's never a question of uh, sunlight coming through a colored plastic. Mm. And we go from that simple status into, uh, we'll just call it advanced status, right? So now we can take that stack light. And as an example, green is still good, red is still bad. But if red is bad for a long enough time, uh, what you're seeing on the screen there is the multiple segments flashing red. So a little extra attention. Uh, you know, this visual factory is, is about immediacy, uh, oftentimes in that productivity gains comes from the operator in the immediate areas, <laughs> seeing that problem as fast as possible. Um, plenty great to, to practice information. Awesome to work in an IOT enabled uh, world where we can send text messages and emails to all sorts of people. But oftentimes the operator closest to that red flashing light is going to be the first one to see the problem and solve the problem. We also show a strip light there. So again, we're sticking with white light for illumination, maybe even 99% of the time that operator is just getting the light they need, but we can build in, we call it an ends flash animation. So we have the ends flashing in a red or it could be any color uh, such that now the operator is getting the illumination and uh, status there. From advanced status, we transition into operator guidance. Again, we're gonna see examples of these later. What we have on this slide, uh, we show a, a timer operation where we are adjusting uh, the color of a touch button in eighth, uh, eighth circumference increments here. So uh, as we light up individual LEDs, we can change their colors showing essentially time elapsed. And the other light we have on the screen, we, it's a linear strip light. We call it a gauge mode. So you almost imagine the, a bubble on, on your level bouncing back and forth as you raise the left side or the right side. So now imagine a sensor input. Uh, could be for distance, could be an inclinometer, could be any other signal out there uh, actually driving the behavior of, of these LEDs such that when you're dialed in in the middle, you're in the proper position, you're going to get green LEDs centered on the light. And when you're out of that range, uh, then you'll see red LEDs indicating uh, the need to bounce back in uh, to proper position. We wrap that up with process visualization. Uh, so again, here we see could be some positioning, some timing type information, but actually helping operators understand uh, what's going on in the process in a very intuitive way. You know, lights have a, a big advantage in that we can use colors and speeds uh, movement of the LEDs changes uh, that can be very universal, very easy for all operators to understand what's going on. Yeah, and I think you know, I, I, one example of this I found is in my wife's car. When I when I go to fill up the gas, the, go to fill up the uh, the air on the tires, it beeps when I get to the right pressure, and that's such great feedback, right? And so yep. I'm thinking of these buttons and lights that if I'm trying to, you know, align something, wouldn't it be great that I don't have to keep, you know, looking at a little, you know, indicator somewhere and I, I can actually get a really, you know, something that's going from, you know, maybe red to yellow to green when it's perfectly aligned or I've done the right thing or I've, you know, completed a process. So little things like this can be so extremely helpful and, and, and such a, uh, uh, you know, for usability, but also for uh, productivity. You know, it just gives you that feedback. You know, you've done it right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you're bringing up audible indication is a good point as well. We don't have any built in here, but uh, certainly audible alarms have evolved as well with uh, the rest of these devices uh, and, and can be added on to tower lights and touch buttons um, to provide uh, that I guess, additional type of operator feedback there. Um, well, in a lot of plants too, it's very noisy. So having the visual, I think, really catches your attention, catches your eyes because you may not hear, you know, you may not hear, you know, an audible alarm unless it was extremely loud, right? So I, sure. I don't know. I just think this is, this is, and again, you know, it, it, it goes along with your HMI, your skater, or whatever you have on the system. Another way of like having the, the light that provides you, the lamp that provides you light in your workspace change color, you know, really can drive home that, hey, something's wrong here. I need to jump on this. And, you know, Sean, <laughs> yeah, we're really proud of our audible alarms and your point about loud factories is well taken. Uh, but operators may be not so fond of audible alarms, no. <laughs> uh, right? Tape them over, uh, stuff a sock, whatever, whatever they can do mm -hmm. uh, to avoid hearing that beep. So, uh, 
certainly a, a good add-on, but yeah, you're right that the, the visual part of using these products is key and, and usually minimally offensive <laughs> to yeah. operators in the area. Absolutely. All right, so just a, a quick definition. We are talking about pro devices here and in banners, lighting and indicator product offering, again, many dozens of product families there. Not all of them are going to go to pro. Not all of them justify the engineering work uh, to to add in these new capabilities. But we are targeting you know limitless possibilities for advanced indication. We're talk, targeting operator interaction. We're looking at dynamic machine states and process statuses. And in, when you look at the whole banner offering, pro sticks out. Uh, you, you'll find it in plenty of different spots on our website. But the easy way to remember when we're talking pro, these things are programmable and professional. So these are the high end of what Banner's putting together in the lighting and indicator market and do give you, you know, programmable I like because it goes with pro. It helps me remember. Mm -hmm. uh, but important to note that we're not talking PLC programming here. We're, we're saying pick color one, pick color two, pick your animation, pick your speed, put it out to the device and you're ready to rock and roll. And so for this one, Sean, uh, you can see uh, one very common protocol up on the screen, the IO link, got a couple of other options. Uh, how do you see uh, machine designers and, and actual automation engineers interfacing with this type of equipment? Yeah, I think IO link is becoming preferred over, you know, using IO because, you know, um, trying to trying to, for instance, if you had several different states, now you you could use half an I/O card to, to interface to the sky, right? Whereas if you use an I/O link, it's still one point on a card, but now we can we can send down the information and the trigger and what we want to do. So I I think um, I/O link for smart devices like this would probably be probably be a top choice. Sure. Yeah. So in addition to I/O link, uh, you know. Banner still staying true <laughs> to its roots or to its history. Uh, when we make pro devices, uh, the majority of them are going to give you the option for standard discrete I.O. control. Use up a couple of those outputs. Uh, most models also have I.O. link. And also in the banner world, we talk about our pick IQ uh, or serial enabled models. Hmm. And so in that case, it, it's just a little tweak to uh, Modbus uh, RS-45 uh, that enables some of our pick to light devices to cruise through a polling sequence a little bit faster, uh, but now has uh, moved into some of these pro lighting products um, so that we can still capitalize on uh, the, the existing mod, you know, Modbus might not be new and cool by any means, but there's still plenty of infrastructure out there, plenty of capable people with that. I think you talked to my colleague, Sean, uh, a month or two ago about Banner's Snap Signal offering <laughs> and, you know, have a nice Modbus backplane there that allows us to do a ton of things on the device side and still bring it back up to the network level uh, very cleanly. Yeah, no, a lot of uh, program controllers support Modbus natively just because it is so, in, you know, it just out there so widely and ubiquitous, right? So yep. um, do you have, and this might be a kind of a segue, but do you have, or a, um, a sidebar, but do you have um, tech notes on how to implement PIC IQ with like a Siemens or a Rockwell or other PLCs? Is that something you guys provide? Uh, yeah, we've got a few documents out there, uh, a few other videos maybe tucked away a little more in the banner archives than they <laughs> should be. Um, but yeah, we can help users get going uh, with this very simple register set. Uh, back to IO link, you know, we put a couple of things in parameter data, you essentially kind of pick uh, the run mode you want to be in. And mm -hmm. with a few more registers, you're, you're choosing your colors on the fly, um, really gives that dynamic indication capability uh, that to your point is, is a little more difficult to do. Um, we do allow for mixed uh, IO, or I guess you could go BCD, some binary IO, <laughs> Uh, on the discrete side. So state one can be a single wire, but state two can be multiple wires. And so we are able to maximize what we can do uh, with, uh, with the pin count we have out there uh, and still give some flexibility for users uh, who, who like discrete IO or, or just uh, 
aren't going to change their machine architecture <laughs> for the sake of a, a cool new light. Yeah, that's that's important because in a retrofit situation, you're not gonna probably not gonna be adding Modbus IO link. So having the the be able to do BCD, which is what we did way you know back in the 80s and 90s a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know that's that's big. Yeah, and uh, and the last thing our the, the viewers are seeing on the screen, uh, the, the listeners might need a little bump on for the discrete products. Uh, we have a simple programming cable with an M12 connector on one side, ready to connect to the device usb on the other side so we do a little protocol conversion uh, you might call it a, a dongle or a programming cable and so now you're able to go into your pc uh, if you are a discrete device user download the free software you can go to banerengineering.com slash pro editor uh, get that software see what it's capable of uh, but again you're you're working left to right you're making a few choices you write it to the device and now you're ready to go with the standard IO control. And with that, let's wrap up uh, this pro overview. And Sean, we have some, some problem solvers up on the screen here, some problems that we think the pro devices solve. Again, you mentioned productivity. That's really at the crux of what pro products, pro lighting and indicator products should be doing for our users. But do you see uh, any common words uh, uh, on the screen here, Sean, of problems you hear elsewhere in automation? Well, labor for definitely because of the shortage. You know, a lot of our, our really talented people in the field decided to retire over the last couple of years. And um, a lot of them were just hanging on because they loved their jobs. But, you know, with social distancing, that just made so many different jobs so much more difficult to staff. And, uh, of course, um, you know, supply chain. If you can make one device do the, the what what many would do, then that's that's pretty big too. I think training training's big too because the more visual indications of what somebody should do, the uh, you know, and that kind of goes along with uptime, right? I mean, the more you the easier or more intuitive you can make a system, the uh, the the more effective your training and more uptime you're going to have. So I don't know. What did, did I did I get it right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took the words out of my mouth on supply chain. Uh, so again, out of the box, a, a pro product is going to work really well for a lot of users. Uh, but the ability to change color and logic uh, and, and I.O. performance means that our users can have a, a single SKU on the shelf, a, a single SKU on their spare parts list or, or machine bill of materials and be able to use that thing in multiple different scenarios, uh, but still just buy only one. Um, Training, uh, also a big deal. Again, we have th you know, other products for light guided assembly, but in a world where employee turnover is rampant and you know, oftentimes uh, workers are going from one plant to the next to the next, if you can say the, the instruction is to follow the green light or <laughs> pay attention mm -hmm. to the color instead of read the screen or read the manual, uh, that's huge in terms of getting new operators up to speed and doing the, the proper steps in the proper order as fast as possible. All right, so with that background, let's jump into the applications. Uh, want to start with one here uh, related to indicator products. So we've got a couple of different operator guidance applications. Uh, the first one we see here uh, comes to us from the seafood industry. Uh, this one specifically up in Iceland, but used elsewhere as well. And what we see here uh, is the banner K50 indicator. Uh, in multiple colors on both sides of conveyor. Uh, if you were to see this conveyor from above, you'd see little chunks of crab and other seafood cruising down. Uh, and then as selectors pull that crab into an operator station, now the K50 by its color changing capability is going to tell that operator uh, what bin that particular piece of seafood should go to uh, or what they need to do with that particular piece of seafood. And so here, the, the color change capability, uh, and this happened to uh, use IO-Link on the communication side, but the color change capability uh, basically gave this machine builder uh, endless possibilities to tell the operator what to do in their particular area with something as simple as a color change versus any other more complicated work instruction. Yeah, I could also see that being useful in a warehouse where, or in a, uh, a tool shed where you want to guide the operator to go get a particular part, you know, or piece of the machine to install or use. And uh, so, you know, you can just light up green, whichever 
wherever you want them to go is green. Every place else is red. So that's uh, that's that's pretty. You know, I could also see too on a long system, like if there's a jam, you know, and you know, instead of them having to go all the way back to the HMI to see the, where the jam is, you could just have one of these lights, and whichever one is, you know, maybe they're all green except where the jam is. I'm thinking of, you know, like magazines and newspapers where they have a lot of collating going on. They have a lot of inserts, and um, you may have, you know. 100 hoppers well which hopper has a jam on it you know or, or has an issue yep. yeah absolutely um longer run processes like that bigger conveyors some applications of material handling <laughs> you just need a, a little nudge in the red direction yeah uh the, the red and green can get the operator there in a hurry we'll take a look at one more here um and on oh, yeah. the middle and right, we're going to see uh, some of the K50s uh, here in, in some of the different colors. Uh, so even with the RGB, the red, green, blue LED technology that these products have, a lot of users are perfectly happy with your greens and reds and yellows and maybe a sprinkle of blue. Uh, but we see in this case, uh, we have some operator guidance in a processing type environment. So here the operator is being asked to connect the right hose <laughs> to the right inlet or outlet. Uh, we're doing some uh, plastics mixing or some other material mixing. And so here we can actually use some of the, we see a cyan and we see a magenta, we see an orange and a violet. And so here these colors can be meaningful to the operator. Uh, again, this is about, in the front end it's operator guidance, but in the back end it's really about your process control, right? If you have to get those mixes right every time, then the operator can simply follow colors, uh, mix whatever <laughs> they're supposed to be mixing, uh, and get it right consistently every time as fast as possible. And Sean, the one we've been waiting for after our little introduction here, got some 22 millimeter <laughs> touch <laughs> buttons for you. So what we have uh, in this particular application, uh, this is Banner's S22 Pro Touch model. Uh, so started as an indicator, we built in capacitive touch technology. Uh, for the listeners, uh, we see uh, two long rows of S22s built into uh, it's a gate control board is exactly how it's labeled. This is uh, in a security or as part of a security system in an airport uh, here in the US. And so each of these pilot touch devices, 22 millimeter devices, can indicate the status of a security gate in this case, and then can also uh, be used to give feedback to the operator as a reset is being complete. So what we see is one of the S22s is red, uh, that, that gate is open or open when it shouldn't have been. We have some others in orange, uh, meaning they are open but have now been dealt with and are waiting for a reset. And then we see an operator touching the other two uh, so that one of them is blue, meaning the reset is underway, and the other is green, meaning that the reset has been completed and that that gate will go back into an operational state. You think you could do that with an old pilot line, <laughs> John? <laughs> no, it's nice. It's nice to have. Um, the capacitive, too, has advantages over the mechanical, right? So you can definitely see, like in this application, there are going to be some applications where you don't want to use a mechanical button. You want to use the capacitive button. Yeah, absolutely. Low force, uh, yep. good in some of the nastier environments where you don't want to build up uh, is that button, yep. the mechanical opens and closes. Yep. And then, of course, in the, the post-COVID times, uh, very easy to clean. Just wipe a rag over it and, and you're good to go. So let's look at a few more of uh, these 22 millimeter devices. Uh, so we see here on the left, uh, some operator interface boxes uh, made by a specific end customer. But again, they're able to take a single S22. We see some in green, some in yellow, some in red, some in blue, some in an orange color. So that is still a single product that they are buying and sourcing. Uh, they are able to then program and control it through their, their normal I.O. scheme uh, and have all those colors available. And again, that's more of a, a food packaging type environment. And so that capacitive touch is still very successful there. Um, whether operators have gloves or not, 
uh, whether there's some dust or moisture or other <laughs> whatever other kind of gross stuff you might find in the food plant uh, flying around, uh, these buttons are going to survive that. And then on the right, we see uh, a custom touch box uh, that a different customer made, again, with S22s uh, in four different colors, but the same model under the hood, uh, here allowing for uh, different operators to operate in the or to be in the same environment and to see what task is assigned to them or to understand the state of the machine and how they need to respond to that so again we see colors and animations being a very straightforward way for the machine to speak out to the operator and then the touch is a very straightforward interface device for the operator to talk back to the equipment and again we see this all directly in the operator work area we don't have to go back to the panel uh, or the HMI or wherever the, the controls are located. Uh, these are robust enough to live where they need to on the equipment itself. And here we get uh, a little look at uh, some of the advanced animations. Uh, so we see a couple more of the 50 millimeter touches uh, in this case, on a cart sanitizing machine, uh, not surprisingly, <laughs> came to be about two years ago <laughs> for this machine builder. Um, gives some grocery shoppers, in this case, reassurance that the cart they're taking is is clean and sanitary. And even as we move uh, beyond some of uh, the initial COVID concerns, still feels good as a consumer uh, to know that the cart you're pushing around is clean and all you had to do was push it through this tunnel. And so we do see... Uh, the K50 in green in the larger image in the grocery store uh, can confirm the machine is active. And then to the right, a little hard to tell, but this is actually, uh, we call it a 50-50 rotate, but you're gonna see half of the light in red, half of the light in blue. Uh, and as the, in this case, customer, grocery store customer touches the button to say, start the machine, sanitize my cart. Uh, can, a good visual feedback that the machine is in a run state, uh, literally spinning around in circles and maybe a, a, a little more fun uh, than just a, a normal green button. We also see some of our pick to light devices. Uh, we call them PTL 110s. They're in the lower right corner. And in this case, uh, not so much for fun and excitement, uh, but we do see that we can take the indicator area and split it into two different colors. And so from a, an effective use of a product standpoint, now we can have a single device uh, be for multiple operators or multiple, in this case, uh, you imagine a pick wall or a put wall, but be for multiple bin or, or pick locations so that we can reduce our device count uh, if the application allows for it. And then, Sean, uh, kind of a cool one. We talked about uh, some of the operator interface and, and timing uh, related to that. So here we see a few different ways to provide operator guidance in terms of timing in their operation, we refer back to this as tact time, meaning to keep things running smoothly, Mr. Operator, you have one minute to get your job done and keep parts flowing down the line. So the image on the left, uh, we then see uh, the eight LEDs uh, around the circumference of this touch device counting down. So three of them are red. Uh, meaning that three-eighths of the time, uh, the program time has elapsed. And so that customer is simply touching the button to say, I'm starting or I'm stopping this process. The timer runs then internally to the device. Uh, and so the operator can see as it gets more and more red that their time is running out. And then we also took a look earlier on at the latest edition of the K50 with that four-digit display in the middle uh, and still color indication capabilities uh, with that display. So now we can touch that and we see a simple countdown happening on the screen. And okay, five seconds for our purposes today is great, uh, but that is a programmable value. So now we can count that time down and, and can be dynamically controlled. Uh, we also see some text pop, on at the, pop up at the end, uh, just telling the operator to stop or the operation has ended. Uh, so super simple start stop uh, operator timing device so these devices anyway. have the timers built in correct correct yeah okay good so you don't have to do some plc coding 
this is you configure this device to say, hey, I want 10 seconds, five seconds, one minute, and and that time is built in. That's very cool. Yeah, even in the discrete devices, uh, again through that free software, you could put in a, a time you wish to count down or count up, <laughs> whatever you want to do with the LEDs, uh, and then as it, it tracks some discrete inputs, it can still handle that processing internally. Nice reduction in PLC programming. Yeah. All right, so let's keep going. We can talk strip lights quickly. So again, strip lights in the banner world uh, are a huge part of our offering, primarily in white, uh, but are evolving just as we're talking about all these other devices. We said, well, if we can put them in little indicators and we can put them in touch buttons uh, and we can put them in tower lights, let's do it in a strip light package. Uh, lots of cool things. To do with that, here we see... Uh, forklift application or material drop application. So this is a, a human driven forklift or I guess high low for your Michigan listeners or whatever else these things get called in the world. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. Um, and so what we see here, we have direct feedback in this case uh, from some banner laser sensors. So as the driver brings the load into the station, on the vertical strip light, he's going to get some feedback uh, that he's getting close in blue, approaching the area, yellow getting close, green you're good, red you went too far, so can now drive into the station until he sees green. Uh, can also then toggle the load left to right back to what we talked about in that gauge mode, getting uh, the, the slug of green LEDs right in the middle. Uh, this, again, for the operator, lets them stay on the forklift, get that visual feedback. Uh, and for whatever is going on behind the scenes, again, could be a robot, uh, could be another process that is really looking for consistent material placement. Now we're going to get that consistent material placement so that we can be confident uh, that it, whatever's happening with this material it can continue uh, in, in a very uh, contained way. Um, Again, for the listeners, <laughs> this can be fully dynamic. We have a nice little GIF, and it's actually possible, uh, of course, with the smart ones, but even with the discrete ones, we take a, a pulse frequency or a pulse width modulated input. And so that can come directly from some of the banner laser and radar sensors. So now we just take a parallel Y splitter cable, put the light on one side, the sensor on the other, power coming into the third leg, and this can be a system completely independent of anything else going on on the equipment uh, totally plug and play just stick it on <laughs> whenever you like or still pull off that sensor information and push it back to the control system if needed yeah you know i like this because there are some applications where while you're on the forklift or if you're using a uh, a pallet jack, you know, a hand, hand uh, uh, pallet jack, you can't really see. Sometimes you can't see if you're in the right spot. You know, I think people are used to this with the cameras now in their cars. Yeah, How helpful that yeah. is. I mean, just think of being able to bring your forklift over and have that feedback on the wall that, hey, you're getting closer, closer. Oh, you went too far back up a little bit. I think that's that's a excellent application for this. It could also be for, like, filling a tank. Like, if you have to do a manual fill, Right. Sometimes it can be difficult to see the uh, the gauge that tells you that you're full. So having an additional indication that, OK, tank is full, you haven't overfilled it is is can be extremely helpful. Yeah, I was at a customer a few weeks ago, a big, big press shop. And so I have some buried tanks in the ground yeah. of uh, whatever hydraulic fluid. Right. So someone's job is to go fill these things. But how do you know? Well, we could give them a quick level sensor. Now you watch the light count up or count down and you don't have to climb down into the pit you don't have to get nasty exactly. um, very, very simple way to get that fill level information out all right back to a couple other simple operator guidance things here so on the left we see a, a light toggling between red and green uh, this is for a, an operator working in the middle of a, a singulator line and so uh, as packages are rejected uh, that weren't singulated properly, this operator's job is to get them back onto uh, the conveyor. And so with that simple green-red indication, I uh, can warn them that, hey, a, a opening is coming up, take that package in front of you, throw it over there. Uh, so very easy way, you know, it doesn't have to be obtrusive, just a quick kind of 
look in your periphery to say, hey, I see green. I, I should be looking that way to get that package on the line. Now, that's a very wide, long light. Is there, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, that looks like it's four feet, five feet. I mean, it looks really long. Um, yeah, is, yeah, it's spot on long, four how, footer. Is it, how, I mean, is that, how long do you make those? Yeah, we're currently uh, stopping at four foot models. Uh, some of that just due to current consumption and sure. liking to stick with normal wire gauges and M12 connectors. Um, but as LEDs are getting a little more efficient and customers are getting a little more creative, we might get pulled to make something a little bit longer. Yeah, for the audio, uh, for the audio listeners, I mean, just imagine this horizontal four foot light and uh, wherever the problem is goes red where there's not a problem it stays green and so it really can help this guy who's trying to sort these packages kind of you know like you said through his periphery you can just see okay the problems over here on the left all the problems over here on the right and uh, that's interesting very interesting application yeah then um, we'll just kind of skip the other one we have on the screen here but we just show a, a timer application so similar to what we showed in the touch uh, buttons yeah counting around the fills, circumference of a circle it changes color as well yep yep so we just see a sensor being activated the light starts counting again because that that time value um, is programmed into the light and so as the sensor beam is broken uh, that light is going to count up so simple again part in place or timing type application but sean we can jump back to your fill level suggestion uh, and look at it a, a few different ways besides uh, the tank in the floor. We also have silos or tanks up in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we see on the left here, uh, Banner's WLS 15 Pro strip light. We see one of them about half red and half green and one of them about 95% red. And again, these are tied into, in this case, radar sensors that are up on the silo coming back through a splitter cable. If you look carefully, you can see how that tucked in behind the ladder. Uh, and in this case, just a nice visual way to see that the tank level from afar. Uh, again, sealed products able to be used outside like we see there. Uh, we have a nice little GIF, again, showing that connection uh, between a sensing device and a light. Uh, and we did mention the, the pulse frequency input uh, we also have converters in the offering such that any 4 to 20 or 0 to 10 device, uh, we can convert that analog signal into the, the pulse digital signal that the light is looking for uh, and, and move that, uh, move those LEDs on the light accordingly. And then this to jump out a little bit, go back into the material handling industry. On the right, we see a uh, palletizing robot. Uh, there's a ton of banner lighting and indicators built in, but we want to focus on the strip light. Uh, built into the left upright of the operator station and so as we see the robot placing uh, the first layer onto the pallet uh, we see just a few blue leds on the bottom again probably working with like a three foot strip here and as that robot continues working gets that pallet up to the top we then see those blue leds pushing all the way to the top of that indicator bar so from a distance the operator is going to see hey, this, you know, this pallet's getting full. I need to come back over here when this thing is totally blue. Not that they can't see the pallet, uh, but uh, just a, a clever way for longer range visibility to be built right into the operator station. And then uh, just to wrap up strip lights, we can go back to some illumination plus status. Uh, so on the left here, we see uh, a pit uh, where an operator has to go into and remove a trolley. This is in a truck manufacturing facility. And so a lot of the times we just want the white light so the operator can see what they're doing. Uh, but we also have status built in. Again, the ends flash status, really powerful just to give a quick red flash uh, on top of that illumination, calling operator attention uh, back to productivity and getting problems solved as quickly as possible. And then on the right, we actually see a tower light in conjunction with a strip light. Uh, we, this is one of our center scroll animations. Again, we're not programming down to the LED level unless you want to. We're picking an animation, picking a color or two, uh, and telling them how fast to go through that animation. And so here, the operator again is going to see a red light indicating maybe the machine is in a startup or a changeover uh, or, or something uh, so that they can spend their time accordingly, either staying in the station to be ready to operate or potentially to leave their workstation 
uh, while maintenance or changeover or some other process is underway that doesn't require their presence. And then uh, let's wrap this up. We can talk tower lights quickly. So we see a couple of different options here. Uh, again, back to fill level, we can repeat what we did with the strip lights, but in tower light or stack light format. Again, there's some comfort there in a, a more proven form factor uh, or just ability to mount that. And then we see on the left, this happens to be a piece of check wire equipment. Uh, if you look carefully, you'd see on the screen that as products weigh too much or too little, uh, you could actually, of course, see the weight and then see where they are on the continuum of too heavy to too light. But what this you know, manufacturer did was actually stack up in a tower light here. And so back to our gauge type condition, we can have the middle segment be green. Weight is perfect, we're dialed in. As we get out from that, too heavy or too light, we can go into the yellow and the orange. And then as we're grossly under or overweight, put some red LEDs on the top and bottom segments of this tower light. Uh, and we didn't have to pick those colors. They're all just configurable. Um, so order whatever we want from the factory, just get the segment count right and then change colors on the fly per the application needs. This again, just gets back to at a glance from a distance, the operator is going to see, man, we haven't had a green one on in a while. What's going on? Or, hey, we've been locked in a green all day. We're making good parts. Uh, we're feeling good about production. And then we can jump to a, a different uh, type of level information. Here we'll just call it maybe a chunkier level. It doesn't have to be high resolution, uh, but we see from a metal processing customer, they came up with using a magenta or violet color to indicate amount of material on a coil. And so with a four segment light, not surprisingly, they have a quarter, half, three quarters and full coil indicated. Again, magenta for a level is not anything that they would use for status, so the unique colors can be very valuable there. And then for more normal operation, red is a problem, they need a material handler. Uh, green, uh, kind of the run or good state, the, the sequence is over. And then they had uh, an alarm state and yellow for them was a coil restrap condition. Uh, so still common use of red, yellow, green. They can make the whole tower light go to that color um, so that it's very visible and clear and then use the segments individually for material level indication. And then last tower light application, we can talk a little bit about process visualization. And so uh, a couple of kind of unique ones here on the left, uh, back to the food processing industry. Uh, we see the tower light in red and blue uh, rotating. So we call this a 50-50 rotate. We have a little offset built in there. And so this one actually is to represent that a blender was in an on state. Um, so just a cool way to use a rotational animation on the tower light to show that a rotational thing is underway. Uh, doesn't have to be for that. Used equally well for changeovers or maybe more uh, common uh, applications across industries, but kind of cool. It's tied with the blender. And on the right, we go back to our fill level type indication. And we can see, in this case, again, a magenta, one of the off colors scrolling up the tower light. So it could be indicating that the tank is being filled or we could tell it to scroll down indicating that the tank is being emptied, or we could just show that level information. So tons of flexibility in all of these form factors. Sean, any questions on that? No, it's a great product line. Lots of interesting stuff there. Um, definitely want to uh, recommend that the audience uh, check, check out the website and see all of the uh, different products that are available. We'll include a link in the description. So every place you get the podcast, you'll see that link right there in the description. So you can go right to the banner website, right to the pro, uh, pro, pro lights and indication and, and check these things out. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's what we had today. So again, Pro for Banner is a hugely powerful platform, tons of ways to help all of our friends in the automation world be more creative, uh, increase your productivity, whether they're on the OEM or the user side, uh, tons of different ways to apply these things. Um, pick some of our highlights today, but if you're interested in 
talking through any other ideas that you might have, again, uh, you can contact us through the BannerEngineering.com website. Uh, track us down in the comments. Find me on LinkedIn, Rob Wiedemann, uh, all sorts of ways uh, to tell us what you're thinking about doing and, and ask some questions about how we can help. Well, Rob, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to go through all that. That was excellent. Look, I had not seen a lot of those products, so just really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to come on the Automation Podcast and uh, bring us all up to speed on these products. Yeah, thanks for having me, Sean. It was a great conversation. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I want to thank Rob for taking time off his busy schedule to come on the show and bring us all up to speed on their pro lighting products. Some really cool stuff there. With that said, if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like and a sub. And if you'd like to get in touch with me or follow me, you can do so over at automation.locals.com. You'll also find all of my PLC, HMI, and SCADA courses at theautomationschool.com. And with that said, I want to wish you a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.